Hello and welcome back to episode 2 of Highway to PowerShell, a series where we cover a few minutes of PowerShell every week. In this episode, we're going to look at the PowerShell pipeline. Let's skip the fuss and jump straight into the command line. In PowerShell, we can send output from one command as input to another command. This is called a pipeline. Let's try running get process vi. If I want to stop this process, I can run get process and connect that to stop process using the pipe character. If I run get process again, we can see that I no longer have any VI processes running. On the surface, this looks just like it does in, for example, bash, but there's actually a big difference. Let's see what happens when we try to sort the output in PowerShell and in bash and compare the results. First, let's start by listing all the processes in bash. Here we can see that I get the header line at the top and then a list of processes. Let's try to get all the processes again, but this time pipe them to the bash command sort. This time we can see that I get my header line all the way down here and all the processes are sorted by process ID. This is because PS only outputs text and sort only accepts text. So sort don't have a clue what a process is it just sorts the lines alphabetically. Let's try to do the same in PowerShell. Let's run get process to list all our processes. We see that we get a headline and then we get a list of processes. Now let's try to pipe this output to the command sort object and see the difference. Well, this looks the same, doesn't it? That is because sort object by default sorts by name. So if I want to, I can, for instance, sort by the property working set instead. And now you can see that I have my list of processes listed by the amount of memory used with PowerShell being the highest. This is because in PowerShell, get process outputs a list of process objects and sort object accept those objects. Sort object can thereby know that it's receiving a list of processes. It will always keep the headers up top and it can sort by any column we want to. Everything that is output in PowerShell is actually an object compared to most other shells where output is just text. Sure, the output may look like text on the screen, but to PowerShell, it's real objects. Objects has a type name and a set of property and methods. Let's look at some real world examples. Take for example, my phone. It has some obvious properties. It has a width, a height, it has a thickness and a color. It also has some less obvious properties, like for example, a manufacturer name and a model name. There are also some actions I can perform with my phone. I can, for example, turn the phone on, I can turn it off, I can increase the volume, I can decrease the volume. When we talk programming, these things that we can do, the actions, is called methods. Now let's go back and look at that VI process again. Here we are back at the terminal. Let's run get process VI. Just as before, we can see that we have a few obvious properties. It also has a bunch of less obvious properties and a few methods. We can, for example, stop a process by using the method kill. If we want to see the type name and all the available properties and methods on an object, we can use the command get member. So if we run get process again, and this time pipe the result to get member, we'll see that it outputs information about the object. If we scroll up, we'll see that the type name is system diagnostics process. We can see that it has all these obvious properties that we saw in the default screen. We can also see that there is a bunch of methods. We can, for instance, see the kill method. And we can see that we have a lot of extra properties. For example, we can see the machine name it's running on, we can see if it has exited or if it's still running, we can get the handle to the process and a lot of other properties. The reason we didn't see all the properties is that PowerShell has a format view for the type name of system diagnostics process that tells us to only show the default set of properties unless we tell it otherwise. If I want to select which properties I want to show, I can use the command select object. Let's try get process. Use the process vi and pipe that to select object instead. Select object has a parameter called property, and here I can choose which properties I want to show. 
So for instance, let's say I want to show the machine name, the uh, CPU, the process name. And here, now I can see that I get a table with machine name, we can see the amount of CPU it uses, and we can see the process name. If I want to, I can do select object, select property star. This time you can see that we get the output in the format of a list instead of a table. Anytime we get more than, I think it is five properties, PowerShell will automatically output it as a list instead of a table. To summarize, Today we learned that we can send output from one command as input to another command by connecting them together with a pipe character. We also learned that PowerShell always outputs objects. Objects has a type name, properties, and methods. If we pipe any object to get member, it will give us a lot of information about how that object is constructed and which properties and method it has. Thanks to PowerShell being an object-oriented language, there are lots of things that we can do with output. We'll look more into that in the next episode. Until then, keep automating.